Okay, so there were a bunch of people gone from class today on field trips and things. So I was thinking it would be a good idea to create a quick video tutorial on what we covered today in Trigonometry Advanced Math. We're working on modeling real world data with sinusoidal functions. And we looked at uh, a couple situations. Yesterday we entered in a data set from page 391, number 6, into our graphing calculators. So to remind us of what that looked like, if I go into my stat edit, we placed the x values into list 1, those were the months, so 1 through 12 went there, and then the average temperatures for each of those months into list 2. From there I'd want to adjust my window to get uh, all the data into view, so months months 1 through 12, so I'm going 0 to 12 for the months, counting by 1s. The temperatures went from the low 40s to the upper 60s, so I went from 40 to 70 there. Then we need to turn on the stat plot feature, and I go into plot 1 and make sure that the on is blinking, and I select that. Okay, great. Uh, from there, we're going to ha go ahead and calculate our regression equation. And we do that through our stat calculate model and we're doing a sinusoidal regression so I'm going to go all the way down to sine regression. See that? That's choice C for me. And I press enter. Your calculator might look different depending on the operating system that you're using. It might just say sine regression. Do not press enter yet. Before we do that I'm going to move down to where I have store regression. Uh, but if you have the original operating system where it just says sine regression, you're going to also want to put in the following. I'm sorry, my microphone fell off there. Let me fix it. Uh, it's probably a bunch of noise, sorry. Uh, so again, after where it says sine regression, or in this spot on this, on this operating system, I'm going to go to VARS y vars function and choose y1 and what that's going to do for us is when it calculates the regression equation it's going to automatically store that into y1 in our y equals menu and then I, I can go ahead and calculate or just press enter on the old operating system and it comes up with this the really neat thing though is that it also has typed that into our y equals so that when we graph, we'll not only see our points, but we see the regression equation plotted on there as well. I want to make note that the regression equation does not fit the points exactly. It's a curve of best fit. And our calculator is using a very complex algorithm to imagine, if you will, what that curve looks like. We're not going to use that complex algorithm. We're going to just uh, kind of make some generalizations about this, but we're going to basically come up with all the components of that regression equation by hand, uh, just by making some generalizations. Okay, So that's how we go ahead and get the regression equation. From there, so this is what the graph looks like. I have some questions that we need to think about to create this regression equation. First off, Using the results, how can we determine the amplitude just by looking at the data set? Now, amplitude tells me how high up or down it goes from an average value. A normal sine or cosine graph, and let's just look at sine, would start at the x-axis, go up, back down, hit zero, and come back up for one cycle. That's not the case here. It's not revolving around the x-axis. It's going around another line. And that line has the name of a median line. Okay, so I'll go ahead and approximately draw that median line in here. Um, I'm just going to eyeball it for now. Here's my median line going right across the center. It's going the same amount of distance up from there as it goes down from there. The whole distance here, the entire thing, is 25 units because this bottom temperature was at 41 and the top temperature was at 66. So half 
of this distance would be 12.5 and 12.5. So it goes up 12.5 from this median line to get to 66, down 12.5 from the median line to get 41. So that is my amplitude of 12.5. So to find the amplitude by looking at the data set, I will take half the distance from the minimum to the maximum, which comes out to 12.5. How could we determine the vertical shift just by looking at the data? Well again, our normal sine function would start at zero, go up, back down to zero, bottom out at negative one, come back up and hit zero. Again, that's not happening here. So if I want to find the vertical shift, I have to find not the x-axis where it was revolving around basically, but this median line because that's taking the place of our x-axis. That's what it's going above and below and intersecting. So to find that, I'm going to start at 41, my bottom value, and go up the amplitude of 12.5 to get a y value that is equal to 41 plus 12.5, which is 53.5. Again, we call this line the median line, and it basically will tell us the vertical shift because we've been moved off of the x axis up to this median line. So, to find the vertical shift, I take the minimum value plus the amplitude, which would produce our median line which gives us our vertical shift, which in this case is 53.5. Now, how could we determine the period by looking at the data? Well, this one's probably the cleanest of the bunch. I just have to think, how long does it take to, to repeat the cycle? In this case, we're looking at average temperatures for months, 12 months in the year. The cycle is 12 months. Finally, how could we determine the phase shift by looking at the data? We're going to use a sine regression for this, and the sine graph usually goes up, and back down, and repeats. If I look at this cycle here, it looks like that same pattern starts here, goes up, goes back down, intersects, and it would travel off, and then eventually go back up and intersect. So this graph has been moved from here to the right, however much this distance is. So where the graph first intersects the median line will tell us our phase shift, which looks to me about to be about one month, two months, three months, four months, a little bit more than four and a half months or so. All right, so I'm going to say there's a phase shift of four and a half months, and I get that again by thinking when does the sign pattern begin? I'm saying about four and a half months down the road. When does the y value first equal the median line? So where does this curve, the y value, hit the median line of 53.5? We could solve that algebraically, but visually it comes out to approximately 4.5 months to the right. So that would be my phase shift, 4.5 months. Okay? All right, so we can do all of this analysis by making some generalizations. That comes pretty close, actually, to what our calculator gave us. Uh, if we take into account that the graph the calculator does doesn't hit our points exactly, and they're using a complex algorithm to derive that curve of best fit. Okay, comes pretty close. Lastly. We took a look at a problem type that will be uh, on our test. Uh, and this has to do with the classic tide problem for a coastal city. And I'm saying the tide in a coastal city peaks every 11.6 hours. The tide ranges from 3.9 meters to 3.3 meters. Suppose that the low tide is at time equals zero, where T is in time in hours. All right. Now, you can go right for the function, the 
algebraic function that models the height of the tide. But I always like to start with a picture, and I'm going to ask you for the graph of the function anyway. So let's just start with the graph, okay? So I'm going to create a picture, that being the graph, of the situation. Now it says uh, a few things. It says at time equals zero, it's at low tide. And it ranges from 3.3 .3 to 3.9. So it's going to start down here at 3.3, that's low tide, creep up to high tide, come back down, bottom out, come back up, bottom down, and it just keeps repeating. And again, the high tide was at 3.9, it says. All right, so that's where these happen. And then the bottom is at 3.3. .3. It also gives us a piece of information that the uh, tide peaks every 11.6 hours. So the distance between these peaks is 11.6. That giving us a period, how long it takes to repeat. Now, if I want to find where this first peak is at, I'm going to have to say, well, this portion here is half of a cycle. It's not the whole thing from top to top or bottom to bottom. It's half of a cycle. So half of 11.6 is 5.8. So that's going to happen at 5.8. Half of a cycle through there. Then the next peak would happen 5.8 plus 11.6 which takes me to 17.4. How about a median line? Because that's going to help us with the vertical shift and things. Well, a median line, if I draw that through here, the median line would be halfway between 3.3 .3 and 3.9, should be at y equals 3.6. So that would be the median line. This axis is time, T, and this axis is H, height. Now I have to decide if I'm going to use a sine graph or a cosine graph. Now sine usually starts at the x-axis, or in this case it would start at the median line. But since we're starting below, I'm going to use a cosine because the cosine usually starts above the x-axis or below the x-axis. So in this case, it would start above or below the median line, which is replacing, for all intents and purposes, our x-axis. So this, we're going to use the cosine. So I'm going to use the format of y equals a times the cosine of b times x minus c plus d. Okay. So y equals the amplitude. How high up or down does it travel from this median line? Well, it's going to, from 3.6, it goes up 0.3 or down 0.3. So this is going to be 0 0.3 for my amplitude. But since I'm starting below the median line, I'm starting in the down position, this is going to be a negative 0 0.3 times the cosine of B. Now B is related to the period length. Remember, period is equal to 2 pi over b. Or in other words, b is equal to 2 pi over the period, which in this case is every 11.6 hours. Okay, so b then, plug that in my calculator, comes out to 0 0.54 approximately. 0 0.54 times x minus the phase shift. Now, we're saying this starts in the down position, just like cosine. It's not that this cosine graph has been moved this way or has been moved this way. It's starting in the down position at time equals zero, so the phase shift is zero, plus the vertical shift. How far up has this been shifted? Well, it was down here. It's been moved up to go around this median line at 3.6. So 
just like the graph went up, that line also went up 3.6 exactly. So the vertical shift is 3.6. All right, now to make things nice and clean and fit the problem, I'm not dealing with a Y value. I'm dealing with height. So I'm going to use H. And I'm not dealing with X's, some random X. I'm dealing with time, T. So there's my function. The last part is determine the height of the tide at 6.2 hours. So 6.2 is my time, so I'm just going to plug that into my equation. H equals negative 0.3 times the cosine of 0.54 times 6.2 minus 0 plus 3.6. I just crank that in my calculator. Make sure you're in radian mode. Put that in the calculator and please put this whole chunk in its own set of parentheses. Otherwise it's only going to take the cosine of 0 0.54 and then multiply that by the 6.2. And that comes out when I put that in my calculator to be about 3.89. Okay, so at four hours, which is going to be, oh, let's see, about right here or so, I'm just guessing, it says it has an output right here. And yeah, that looks about 3.89. That's, that's feasible, I think, according to my drawing. So that's great. There's our final height. So we've talked about modeling some real-world data, using models of sinusoidal functions, all of those things. Um, and then I would like you, if you haven't gotten the assignment, to do the following problems for homework. Page 391, numbers 7 through 9 and 13. All right, have fun. Good luck.